areas, church and festive music, in the form of the Jubilee concert in this church, Hans Henkel took it up with his typical energy and enthusiasm. As always, when you, Hans and I, had been doing things together, it was most it was a most enjoyable experience, made even more pleasant by the efficiency of your capable team. I sincerely thank you and your wife, Petra, for the enormous effort you have put into the preparations to make this evening a great success. So let us welcome Hans Enker. Currently, 
just in their last place. The students got Dr. Crabb, but there won't be students very long because you've already uh, been on the watch the big opera houses of the world. You will soon see them pop up there, New York, New York, and so on. So, so today with us, and it's just most incredible. So, so now Dr. David Grant will ease us in slowly and beautifully into the world of sugar, vegetable, and environments, and it's not that much. Thank you, Hans, for those kind words. Ladies and gentlemen, most of our communication is going to be in music. Uh, I would just like to say that we're going to be performing from various parts of the church. The first and last item, because let me just digress for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. What we try to do to show that opera is not just about nasty things happening to nasty people, <laughs> <laughs> but also an artistic quality. The same goes for art songs, spiritual connotation. So we try to find that connection between this beautiful building, the philosophy. So the first and the last items of this concert you will see are actual Korans. In fact, one is written, the words were written by Hans Sachs from Kuna about Martin Luther. And the last one is the word written by Martin Luther. The music tries to be very dark. So the will be accompanied by Jean Cruz, so we will be out of the fire. Apart from that, the singers will be here to try various places in the acoustic. The acoustic really is best here, near the altar. It does mean that those who are seated near the front and at the sides will enjoy, uh, I think, what they call limited view seats. So just close your eyes and imagine. Um, the main thing is the importance of the sound. That's all I want to say. I throw this journey together. I throw them our artists. So we can see the importance Thank you.
all understand God was an Augenblick. But for the English speaker, the Augenblick is, oh God, what a moment. And we have decided we now have a 10 minute break to let the moment breathe in us and uh, sink in and enjoy it even more. I know we would all like to hear more, more of this moment. We will, after the break, use the break to stretch your leg. We'll let air in. Don't leave the church if you don't have to. Get to know your neighbor, shake hands, communicate, stretch your leg, and enjoy the moment. Come back to the represents the Victorian government, to whom we extend our sincere thanks for this very valuable piece of land where the German Lutheran Church has worshipped for the last 150 years. Let us welcome and hear my It's a bit, it, it, it is a bit rusty, yeah. 
I, I did have the opportunity to go to Germany last year, and uh, it's remarkable how over a couple of days of having to speak German, it does come, it does flow back. But uh, for those people who um, don't speak German, I'll just briefly recap what I said, um, and that is that uh, uh, I am one of 108,000 German-born Australians, one of 29,000 German-born uh, residents of Victoria. And very significantly here in Victoria, we've got 188,000 uh, people of acknowledged German ancestry. So that's a very large number of people uh, with, uh, with German links, and uh, I think it uh, builds a very strong relationship between Australia uh, and and Germany, both culturally and socially, and as we all as we all know, a uh, strong relationship that uh, exists economically. Uh, I came over here uh, at the age of three uh, with my parents. Uh, I was uh, sort of hijacked in a black Volkswagen from the Wales where I was born to a uh, place called Weberhaven. And uh, I was told we were going for a ride in the black Volkswagen. And, uh, uh, I wasn't told we weren't coming home. And um, <coughs> so we, uh, we got on the uh, ship called the Custom Village and uh, it took six weeks to get out here. We were detoured by a uh, we wanted to go to Perth, there was a major storm and we were detoured here to, uh, here to Melbourne and uh, here I am some, uh, uh, what, some uh, 43 years later, even though I'm only 25. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, certainly my mother used to uh, take me to this uh, church quite often, usually for major, uh, major religious uh, uh, events, whether it was Easter or Christmas. And, uh, you know, usually sort of sitting somewhere about five or six rows back, and uh, I was constantly, uh, to tell the truth, I actually hated it. I had to be told, you know, don't sit still, don't fidget, all of that sort of stuff. So, uh, <laughs> but I've got to say, being here today certainly brings back some, uh, some very, some very, very fond memories. And uh, uh, as we've heard, this is a celebration of the uh, 150th anniversary of uh, uh, this church here. Uh, it was. Uh, uh, the land was a grant from the, uh, uh, from the then government of uh, Victoria, Governor of Trump, uh, and uh, the church has survived here uh, for that 150 uh, year period. Uh, and uh, I've got to say, despite the, fact, uh, despite the fact that it exists opposite this uh, House of Bill Repute that we have had here. Um, <laughs> But it was it, this, end, this end of town actually has some has a fairly interesting history, uh, as I'm told by uh, as I'm told by some of the people over the Parliament House, because originally when Melbourne was first being laid out, of course the uh, dominant religion was uh, the dominant religion was uh, was Anglican, so the uh, Anglican Church got that prime location down there on the corner of Swanston Street and uh, on the corner of Swanston and Flinders, uh, and of course the next major religion was the Catholic Church, so they popped them up here because the Anglicans largely dominated the government in those days, and so they headed up this end, and they hit, and, and, and it's quite interesting, if you have a look at some of the history of Parliament House, or how it was originally intended, there was a big dome that was going to go on, and it was a very, very long dome, a very unusually shaped dome, and uh, uh, I'm told by some people that that was actually intended to try and lock out the spire of uh, St. Patrick's. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but certainly, look, uh, it's, uh, as I say, it's uh, 150 years here, and uh, this uh, church has uh, established a very proud tradition uh, over that period of time. Uh, I was certainly, uh, I was certainly born into the uh, Lutheran church myself in the house, and I was actually a Christian uh, VS, but in those days, uh, in those days, my mother wanted me to christen me under it, but uh, she was reading some dastardly French book called The Bad Opera and Ursula. Fortunately, my sister got away without being called Ursula. But, uh, <laughs> so she got called the Olga. And uh, but, uh, I wasn't allowed to be christened under it, uh, so I had to be christened, un christened under it. Uh, and uh, um, so I you know, went to uh, spend numerous years uh, sort of going to. Uh, um, you know, going to uh, Sunday school even at the age of two and three in uh, Germany. And uh, so we did come here and, uh, I, you know, as I say, it was a fairly sort of regular event, at least two or three times a year coming to this church. So it's a great pleasure to be able to come back here. It's a great pleasure to be able to celebrate the 150th anniversary uh, of this, uh, 
this church here today and uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very flattered and uh, my, uh, my mother, I think, who now lives in Queensland, will also be talking when I tell you that I uh, was here today. Yeah, listen, thank you very much. Consul General of the Federal Republic of Germany. He's the German representative not only in Victoria, but also in Tasmania, South Australia, and Western Australia. There's always been a very close relationship between the consulate and this church. Welcome, Schwann. Liebe Landsleute, liebe Freunde, ladies and gentlemen, I am tempted to, to ask how many of you came on the Aurora. <laughs> no, I did not come on the Aurora, <laughs> but uh, that was my first uh, touch of Australia. I traveled from Bremerhaven to New York as an exchange high school student in 1960, and the ship had stocked Foster's because it had just brought German migrants to Australia. Um, when Andre Hermann mentioned that at the moment we have 29,000 people of German descent here in Victoria, it seemed that some of you were surprised. But it just shows that um, people seem to forget what great influence German migration had on Australia and here especially on Victoria. The first census in Australia was held in 1860 and it showed that roughly 6% of the population were Germans. Germans were the second largest group of migrants coming to Australia. This church here bears testimony to that. The uh, congregation was formed in 1853 the first migrants from Germany, actually from Prussia, came in 1849 here to Port Phillip Bay. Three ships, long, long voyages, not six weeks, but nine months at the time. But they were very, very prosperous here, the first German community, this church here, bears testament to that. We also have some other institutions which are as old, like the Tivoli Club. We recently had its 140th anniversary. But so many other signs of German contribution to the development of Australia and to the development of Victoria have disappeared. Sorry. Have disappeared over the uh, century, or rather in the time of the First World War, so many of the German roots simply disappeared. Families changed their names, and it was not only the families, but uh, so many uh, parts of Melbourne changed their name. Doncaster, that used to be Waldau, do people remember that? There even was a Mount Bismarck in Victoria. <laughs> Some names probably escaped the attention because no one realized that they were German. Altona, that is the old Prussian port of Altona next to Hamburg. Heidelberg, apparently no one dared to change. Perhaps too many people came from it or had studied at Heidelberg. And of course they didn't change Coburg because that was the name of the royal house at the time. They called themselves Windsor in 1917 afterwards. So we do have a very strong German influence here in Victoria. It was totally forgotten, or rather not forgotten, but it went into total hiding in the time of the First World War. German was not allowed to be taught in schools here until 1926. That is, of course, a large cultural break in, a, in the family life and in the life of the young people. So 
So I'm very happy to be here with you and also to see that uh, tonight's event has attracted so many people to come because this is here one of the major remnants reminding you and reminding us of the early influence of German migrants coming here to Australia, bringing also the church life here, but also their cultural life. And I'm therefore very glad that we celebrate here by hearing opera music, all from Germany, I must add, although we will hear something by Mozart. But at the time, the emperor in Vienna was the German emperor, not the Austrian emperor. <laughs> so, enjoy the evening, and thank you very much.
centerpiece of the concert, we are going to deem the Meister Singer of Nuremberg, Nuremberg our post Ludium. And we have decided, the organizers, that the ladies will express the thanks. And I have a surprise for you. This congregation is blessed with the most beautiful Lutheran pastor um, amongst German speakers. It is the wife of our pastor, another pastor as well. She will be assisted by my wife to thank the artists and do the rest. Thank to all those different ways of expression, uh, of expression um, uh, relating to God and among human beings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> 